the Riemann zeta function, but to be more precise, the Hurwitz zeta function today. Adolf Hurwitz. Sounds like Hitler, my boys. Stop! You violated the oh. law. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I'm doing a little recording session once again today. As always, by now I have like 17 videos pre-recorded and it's going to be an absolute mess rendering all those videos in Premiere Pro. But yeah, I just recently noticed like a second ago that <laughs> I was referring to the digamma function all the time as polygamma function. So this is not wrong. I have said that the digamma function is just a zero of polygamma function. Polygamma of the zero of order. That's why I said we can actually rewrite it like this right here. Okay, that's another type of notation of the polygamma function. But yes, yeah, still, I wanted to keep the terminology right and say that this is the digamma function. But yeah, here goes today. We are finally going to introduce the polygamma functions of the nth order. And also, with that stuff out of the way, we can actually derive the Taylor series expansion for our boy, the digamma function right here. And it's going to be pretty exciting because there's yet another number theoretical connection between our gamma function and this time even the digamma function and another really cool boy that we have talked about before, kind of the Riemann zeta function, but to be more precise, the Hurwitz zeta function today, Adolf Hurwitz. Sounds like Hitler, my boys. So yeah, before we can dive in a bit more, I want to change notation once again. The zero of polygamma function is the same as the digamma function, but it's zero of derivative with respect to z. So in order for us to get the polygamma functions, what we want to do is differentiate the digamma function n times then, okay? So this is something we are going to do today. And yeah, let's dive right in. Let's start off with the first derivative and let's see if we can see a certain, well, pattern in the differentiation. There is one, I wouldn't say, that we are going to look for a pattern if there weren't one. So yeah, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. So differentiating our boy with respect to z. This is an ugly looking fork right here. So differentiating one over z leaves us with negative one over z squared. Negative and negative is going to cancel out to just one over z squared. Coolio! Our oily macaroni constant is going to die in the process and this is good because no one really likes oily macaroni. It tastes like shit. So this is going to die. Plus a sum running from n equals to one to infinity of Right here, probably Papa Blackpill Rapper would say, yeah, we are going to use linearity and we are going to differentiate term by term, but that's an infinite sum in a normal case. It's not that easy. And here comes some pure mathematical stuff. And once again, yeah, I'm throwing around with those terms all the time, but you can check for yourself. This infinite sum right here with those exact terms should converge uniformly. And if stuff converges uniformly, we can actually interchange limits meaning we can interchange the limit, the difference quotient right here, with this limit, as for example, k approaches infinity up here. Meaning we can kind of use the linearity of our differential operator to differentiate in here term by term, just because of this uniform convergence. Check it for yourself. I'm not a pure mathematician. I have checked it before and it should work out. So differentiating one over n with respect to z, is going to result in certain death. So this thing right here is going to die out just like the Creek people 3000 years ago or whatever I said in this one video where I complained about uh, mathematical notation in Creek letters. Oh yeah, did a um, letter fader. <laughs> also, we are going to differentiate this thing right here with respect to Z. And I want you guys to notice one over N plus Z is nothing but N plus Z to the negative one of power. And differentiating this is quite easy, dragging the negative one down, negative and negative is going to become positive, reducing the power by one. So this is one over n plus z squared or n plus z to the negative two power to the negative squared power. <laughs> and then inner derivative is nothing but one. So et voila, we've got this. I want you guys to notice something else. We can actually make this a little bit more beautiful, beautiful. We don't really have a zero of term right here. So not 
a term where n is equal to zero but i want you guys to notice if we would have one then it would be zero plus z squared this is nothing but z squared in the end because zero plus z is just z if you have another fucking apple and you don't place another fucking apple next to it and you still have this fucking apple right here this this only one that you have originally and well the cool thing is we have this one over z squared term right here exactly so what we can do we can actually rewrite this as the sum running from zero to infinity of one over n plus z squared or like my grandma would say n plus z to the negative tooth power okay for differentiating more and more we want to make sure that we are going to write it like this because for most people this is way easier to um, yeah rewrite okay now we are going to differentiate a second time and see what we get and now the simplified so nicely and once again those sums are going to be uniformly convergent all the time so we can just direct the differential operator to the inside all the time so now we are going to get the second derivative of our digamma function the second polygamma function which is nothing but sum running from n equals to zero to infinity of this thing differentiated tracking the negative one down okay this is negative one to the first power i'm going to put it like this or you can say this is negative one to the third power it's an odd power that's where i want to get it and also we are going to have um n plus z to the negative third power also we are tracking down the two we have dragged down the negative tooth power so this is two and then one over n plus z to the third power i'm going to leave it like this let's differentiate once more and let's see if we can see a certain pattern sum running from zero to infinity of dragging okay this thing right here once again is n plus z to the negative third power dragging the negative three down is going to give us positive one but this is negative one squared or negative one to the fourth power i really don't care dragging the three down leaves us with two times three times one so if you only have one apple then you only have one apple you see so this right here actually was two factorial in disguise and this thing right here is three factorial in disguise and then we are going to have one over n plus z to the fourth power and i hope you can already see the pattern right here so if we differentiate more and more okay getting more and more polygamma boys we're actually going to end up with the nth polygamma function and i'm not going to put it as n for reasons that will become apparent in a second i'm going to put it as the s s differential our s polygamma function which is nothing but okay on the odd derivatives we actually got ourselves an even power on negative one meaning we are just going to put it as negative one to the s plus one power okay that's something we can do if we have two for example we have negative one to the third power so this is something that works out quite nicely or s to the uh, s minus one power right here it really doesn't quite matter also on the third derivative we had three factorial on the tooth derivative second derivative we had two factorial meaning we are going to have s factorial right here and those are just constants we can bring it to the front of our sum and then we are going to have the sum from n equals to zero to infinity of on the third derivative we had four on the second derivative we had three so this is actually one over n plus z to the s plus one power okay and voila those are our polygamma function of the s order s s, s, s order i know choosing the letter s isn't quite nice to spell but it does make sense if you introduce a certain function right here i want to guys notice if you plug one into here okay if you plug one into here instead of z then we are going to get n plus one to the s plus one power and for z being equal to one i'm going to show you an easier example on the first derivative evaluated at one we are going to get an infinite sum running from zero to infinity of one over n plus one squared make a change of index and you are actually going to get okay first derivative 
is nothing but a sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, and I know you boys realize what this actually is. This is nothing but zeta of 2. That's supposed to be a zeta in another row. This is our Riemann zeta function. And in general, where our zeta function depends on two variables, namely z and s plus 1 right here, s plus 1 and not s plus 1, we are going to refer this thing uh, to this thing right here as nothing but the Hurwitz zeta function of s plus 1 comma z. And whenever you plug in 1, okay, you are just going to get the gamma function of s plus 1 right here. <laughs> And this is absolutely cool. So yeah, at one evaluated Riemann zeta function, evaluated at z, it's just a Horvitz zeta function, a zeta function dependent on two variables. And you see this formula only holds for s being element of the natural numbers without zero. So on the zero of term, the digamma function, this really doesn't hold. But we have calculated the s, the derivative, nth derivative, kth derivative, whatsoever, meaning whenever we know about the derivatives of a function and whenever this function is infinitely often differentiable, which it is, this is just a rational function and it's really easy to differentiate infinitely many times, we can actually add, expand this thing right here into a Taylor series. This day gamma function is thus obviously analytical and this is fucking cool and that's what we are going to do next. Since we haven't done any Taylor series stuff for like a month now, I've written out the formula for Taylor series expansion and the cool thing is we are allowed to continue functions using this formula at a different spot than zero. So not a Maclaurin series expansion, we can take a look at the digamma function being evaluated at x not being equal to 1 and like I said before it's going to turn out pretty nicely when we plug in z being equal to 1. So, here it goes. We are going to turn our digamma function of z into a Taylor series expansion. The thing is, like I said before, this formula for the s derivative only holds for s being element of the natural numbers without zero. Meaning our zero of term, the digamma function in, in itself is kind of the odd ones out, okay? So it's an odd derivative, it's weird, it has this weird euler mascheroni constant in here, that's why we have to treat it more carefully. Meaning we're going to just drag stuff out. So the first member of this thing, not the first, the zero of member, we are going to drag to the outside. This is just the digamma function in, in itself, evaluated at 1, where our z0, x0 is being equal to 1, plus the sum running from n equals to 1 in this case to infinity of our nth derivative of our digamma function, the polygamma function of the nth order, evaluated at 1 over n factorial times z minus 1 to the nth power. I don't want to mix my notation up right here. Also, this s right here is going to be an n in a second. <clears throat> Let us take a look at our digamma function evaluated at, at 1. Okay, so we have negative 1 right here, negative euler mascheroni constant plus sum running from 1 to infinity. Let's take a look at the sum. First member is going to be 1 minus 1 half then, plus 1 half minus 1 third, plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. It's a telescoping sum. Everything except for the very, very first term, which is nothing but 1, is going to cancel out. This thing, the sum right here is going to be a 1 in the limit, 1 minus 1 is 0, leaving us with negative euler mascheroni constant plus the sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity of the nth derivative of our digamma function evaluated at 1, meaning we are going to get negative 1 to the n plus 1th power and then n factorial. Like I said, stuff is going to cancel out big time, it's absolutely beautiful. Then we have this n factorial right here over n factorial going to cancel out. Then we are going to have the Horowitz zeta function. It's still the Horowitz zeta function at the moment of n plus 1 comma 1 and then times z minus 1 to the nth power. And like I said the Horowitz zeta function evaluated at 
um, z being equal to 1 is going to be just a regular old Riemann zeta function, leaving us with negative gamma plus sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1th power. Then we have our Riemann zeta function of n plus 1 times z minus 1 to the nth power. And we are basically done. That's an absolutely beautiful in individual right here. But what we can do, we can drag a negative 1 to the outside, for example, to have negative this sum of negative 1 to the nth power. Then we can just collect those terms and bring the negative 1 to the inside. Meaning we can make this even more beautiful by turning our digamma function to negative gamma plus, no, negative, like I said, sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity of, okay, this is going to give us the Riemann zeta function of n plus 1 times 1 minus z to the nth power. And this is it. This is our digamma function turned into a Taylor series expansion, and this is pretty fucking cool. It's a pretty nice formula. If you would expand this right here, you are going to get an infinite series inside of an infinite series once again. And yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It's so cool looking. And this Taylor series is actually quite useful. So you can evaluate a lot of stuff using it. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more by the features I created or support the channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a polygamma day. See ya.